What's up, YouTube? How's it going? This is actually my second time recording, because apparently the first time I was recording, I didn't have the mic plugged in, so I was essentially talking to myself, which is always fun. I love to talk to myself. But um, anyway, uh, how I play this game is really, really, I try to stick to how the pros play the map. And what that was is how I start off, <clears throat> I start off by running towards the middle, and chucking a nade right at that wall so that way the nade can bounce off at the enemy that's jumping up just like it did there but the problem was with me I messed up and that guy messed up also what I was supposed to do is while running towards the top where the camo is I chuck the nade while I'm in mid-air so that way by the time I land and my enemy lands because technically if you both go at the same time you're supposed to land there at the same time he'll be running into the nade and then I just have to shoot him one time in the head but uh, either way, it worked out for me. And another way that I play this map, which is Warlock, because if you guys didn't know, this is a map called Warlock on the MLG playlist. And another way I play it is trying to stay off the top. Like right there, I was on the top. Not just so good idea. You want to stay towards the bottom of the map where the nades are. So like where, right where I'm standing, just circle this whole bottom area. It's really like the essential way to get a kill on this map is just to keep circulating the bottom here. Because if you're on the top, you're a very, very easy target for enemies to nade you. And so if you're right on the top, an enemy's just going to nade you like crazy until you die. Or multiple enemies, actually, if they call it out. And right there, what I did, another thing that's crucial about this map, is knowing where the portals take you. So if you see an enemy go through a portal, you have to know where that portal's going to lead to, so that way you know where he went. So if you put the guy one shot, you should know where he is, and he'll be an extremely easy kill for you, because most of the time, people either stay there like that guy was doing, he was hiding in the corner there, or they run out and you could just catch him in the head while they're running out. And see, like right there, he went through the portal, hello, I followed, but um, I think later on in this game also, I kill another guy that went through the portal. And how Halo works, if you guys do not know this, the team that, well this is pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people think they can do easy turnarounds when it's pretty hard to do a turnaround. So the way Halo works is if you start off unable to clean up your kills, you're more than likely going to lose. Because if you're not able to clean up those one shots, it's going to make it really hard to catch up in the end for all the people that were cleaning up their one shots. And that's, that's just how it works, you know. You have to clean up the shots. You have to, if you get someone one shot, that doesn't mean chase after him. It means make sure either a teammate or you try to get that kill. Because if you don't, then it's, he's one guy that got away, got to recover, recuperate, and help out his teammates while you're getting shot at. So it's it's really crucial to, to clean up their shots. And um, I think that was it. This game was pretty good for me like uh it was a pretty solid gameplay although it was a little laggy you'll notice i think once or twice i get some pretty pretty nasty blood shots right here actually i hit the guy while his shield's one shot look at that he was getting hit while his shield was one shot and it wouldn't break which was pretty astonishing on my part i literally heard his shield getting hit and uh that's it i believe also later on there's a guy one shot who does not get hit on the head but um other than that it was pretty solid for for like a handicapped team we were three and they were four and we didn't really have mics when three other guys had mics because they were three in a party but um that's not that's not because like i'm amazing or anything like that or my team was just better than them that's because their team was extremely bad and uh i'm not the type to talk trash about anyone but they just they were not great players they just they really weren't good at all but um yeah that's that's my, like my main tip for you guys is running around the bottom and back of the area towards like the nades so circling around red nades yellow nades green nades and blue nades instead of going up the top where the uh, objectives are because that's that's how you end up dying either they call you out and they just mirage nades at you or they call you out and every time you pop your head out you get shot up by three people and see here's what i mean see he went through the portal and i knew where he was going to be and that's what I was saying. You have to know where the portals lead to, so that way you can catch them on the other end, and it's going to be an extremely easy kill for you. Another thing about this game that I've just recently been doing is actually knowing how to place yourself on the map based on where your teammates are. So what that means is you look at the map, you look at where your teammates are, and you think, okay, the best way to move around the map is to try and be around a teammate at all times to try and make sure I can help out a teammate and a teammate can help me out. 
So for that, I want to see where my teammates are shooting. And when your teammate is shooting at someone, it's the yellow. I believe when they're getting shot at, it's their their icons are orange. So when they're shooting at someone, their icon turns yellow. And when they're getting shot at, their icon turns orange. So you always know when you have to help out a teammate based on what's going on. So if you see a teammate near you and his icon is yellow, you know, okay, he's, he's shooting someone. Let me see if I can flank the person he's shooting at from behind and help him out easily. Or if he's getting shot, okay, let me run in and jump ahead of him so that way I could tank the shots that he was taking and he can assist me on this easy kill because I'm sure he puts shots in the guy that's shooting at him. So the enemy I'm going to be fighting, it's called a bait and switch. The enemy I'm going to be fighting is going to be weakened while I'm at full shields and it's just like extremely easy to crap on him. So that's something that I, I've been doing that I feel is very, very important in Halo. And another thing like I just did right there, I timed my shots, I didn't spam to try and get the kill before that guy, I figured I'm gonna help him out or get the kill or whatever, it doesn't matter. But the important thing is that I get perfect headshots. So to really make sure you get the kill and to make sure you clean up your one shots, you wanna time your shots, you don't wanna spam, you let your aim reset. And uh, see like right there, that was one of the lags I was telling you about where you actually saw a bloodshot on his head as he was falling down, but um, he didn't drop dead to it. So that it was nothing major, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a lag because the game's playing pretty smoothly. What I think it is, and what a lot of people are telling me, like they cannot believe, is that I play on a 42-inch TV. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, the big difference is with a 42-inch TV, you have a very high refresh rate. And what that means is it takes time for things to reset and things to actually happen in the game. As well as I play on a wireless controller, I'm not playing on a wired. Whereas on a wired controller, your actions, for the second you pull the trigger, it happens in the game right away. So a wired controller is the preferred controller compared to a wireless. Whereas a wired controller doesn't have that type of delay or lag that a, wired con that a wireless controller has when in a wired control wireless oh, you hear me in a wireless controller when you push the trigger it takes time for the receiver to get the message that you pulled the trigger and then for it to send the bullet and then for the bullet to actually get shot which is why like not a lot of people or not a lot of pros play on wireless controllers another thing is like i was saying before with the TVs on a 23 inch uh, standard MLG TV the refresh rate is low, so when something happens, it happens right away. On my TV, it takes a little longer.